Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never catch me. On today's vlog, I got Thad Bull and Eyes. Yep. We're doing Q&A, and I have more questions than I've ever answered on one show before. So many. Here we go. All right, guys, so welcome to the Matt Beck Show. This is the Q&A portion of our week. Um, sorry it's been a couple weeks since we've done this. but We're not like a hiatus, <laughs> but, but not really because yeah. you're just editing a lot of videos. <laughs> There's just a lot of stuff going on, but I, I really enjoy the Q&A portion. So thank you guys to everyone that submits questions to the show um, using hashtag the Matt Beck Show on Instagram or Twitter. That's how you can uh, get the question out there so that we see it. Today, uh, I'm really excited because... All of the questions come from one beauty school in a town called Olean, uh, New York. Cool. I want to say Olean, Illinois. For some reason, I have no idea why. I was actually waiting for that, I think to be honest with you. I grew up near Moline, Illinois. Yep. So I did. Okay, so Olean, Illinois, or Olean, <laughs> <laughs> Olean New York. Um, Jaina is the teacher there. She ended up, she got our students hooked on the vlog and the videos and everything. So she asked the students to submit questions. So we have a ton of them. So I'm just going to get started right away. So I don't want to waste any time and I want to try to get through every single one of them. What I'm so. excited about this is that this is, these are questions coming from like new minds, like new minds yeah. in the industry. So like yeah. we have a lot of questions that resurface, but like I'm really excited to see where like these questions what go. they're asking exactly yeah because yeah. that has no idea so here we go so <laughs> all right um becky peck says uh or asked do you use donald scott prepare on all your cuts or just razor cuts so this is donald scott prepare um it's something that i i definitely use on every razor cut the cool thing about uh prepare is that it's basically a liquid tool glide so it's great for cutting any type of in any type of situation. It's going to help you with your sectioning. It's going to help uh, comb through the hair. It's got a ton of proteins in it, different things. Uh, this everything about this is beneficial to the hair, and it does not have um, a hold. So it, it, you can use as much as you want of it, and it's not going to weigh the hair down or anything like that. So it's really good for razor cutting because it gives a nice slip to the hair, but also great for sectioning and cutting hair in general. So definitely a cool product. This is available on Free Salon Education. So if you want to check it out, get more information, go to freesaloneducation.com, and you can get that info there. I concur with everything you just said. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <laughs> Another So here's a carving comb question. Is there any certain carving comb you find works better than another, um, or are the blades better? So uh, just to, th that can quickly be answered. The only difference in the carving combs is there's, well, there's two different types of carving comb. There's carving comb fine and carving comb wide. This is actually a question that's come up quite often. Um, it has a 100% carved side, a 50% carved side. Both of these tools are identical um, when it comes to the cutting portion of it. The only difference is the, the comb. So if you're looking for finer teeth with more tension, you would go with the carving comb fine. And if you're looking for wider teeth, um, a little bit more like coarse, thick hair, I like to use this, bigger sections. As far um, as this, the one that would have the sharper blade, I would imagine that would be the side that you use less. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, otherwise, they're the same blade. You can change them in and out. So a lot of people ask about the carving comb. A lot of people order the carving comb. So I appreciate all those orders. Now, here's the deal with this. The carving comb, um, I, I've talked about it before, but back about 10 years ago was when I was first introduced to the carving comb. It was made um, by Donald Scott, but through Paul Mitchell. So, uh, But it was it was made of like full-on plastic. So Yeah, it was completely different material, yeah. different feel like this. You couldn't heat it up. Um, it didn't have the metal top to it. So this T, um, the T top that holds the blades in would break or, you know, it, uh, there was at one point what this would open up. What's that? So what were you doing with yours? <laughs> I know. Well, I was everyday <laughs> life. So um, the carving comb has definitely stepped up its game. That's why I'm really excited to have it on the shop on freesoneducation.com. Now, here's the deal with this, though. A lot of people ask, can you get the wide teeth in black? You can't. Um, but... 
I would get both of them to be honest because they're th- about thirty five dollars a piece. Can so you? seventy dollars is how much you'd pay for one razor, and this way you get two, you get both teeth, and uh, you're good to go on that. Now I would like to just like expand on that question just in case yeah. if it wasn't necessarily the uh, thought that the carving comb came with two different types of blades, but what about the different razors in the line. Do you find that the chopstick blade is sharper than the carving combs uh, blade or the DSX-4? Okay, so that's a good call, Thad. So here's the chopstick pro. Um, I compare the chopstick pro to a feather razor. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one, the thing I like most about it is you can see how thick the head is on a carving comb. So the reason I have all three of these ready to go in my kit is because this is for more my precision cutting. If I'm trying to get in nice and close to the to the head or nice and close to my fingers, I use the Chopstick Pro. You can also section with it and section it away. So if you had a couple of them, it's kind of cool because you can section it and, and cut each section. Um, not necessary, but it's cool if you have it. And then um, with the carving comb, you can get in close to your fingers, but there is a certain point when uh, the carving comb just isn't quite close enough, that's when I go to the Chopstick Pro. Um, the other thing is, like, I'll do different texturizing techniques, running the, the carving comb back and forth mm-hmm. on my fingers. There's a lot of different cool um, techniques that you can do with the carving comb that you can't do with the typical razor. So, um, so again, the same reason why we have three or four different types of scissors in our... Exactly, yeah. I love... I mean, I'm a tool, like geek like i love <laughs> i love anything that has to do with technology this to me is like yeah, hair you, technology. you just bought a new uh, overlay for your keyboard for <laughs> right exactly time. yeah so every day i'm trying to get something new that makes my life easier and makes my work cooler right exactly. so whether it's a computer or scissors or combs everything that you get makes your job easier so hopefully that answers your question we're only two questions in one, one. okay what is your worst hair mistake and what did you do to overcome it? I'm going to send this to you for one second. Worst hair mistake you've ever made. Worst hair mistake I've ever made. Yeah. I mean, I've made f- several. Okay. I'm trying to think of like which one I would classify as. Well, let's just say you've made several like several hair mistakes. How did you overcome all of them? Um, I think just like you would I want to answer this very philosophically. Okay. Just like in life, like if you focus too much on the mistake that you made, you're just going to dig your hole deeper. You yeah. got to like, like look at like other options. You got to look at the outcomes, like, like be like, okay, well this is kind of like a, a, a potential dead end. Let's see what, uh, some other solutions as far as what we can do. Yeah. Um, like for instance, uh, I foresaw a potential, uh, mistake with uh, my client who came in, who'd been box coloring her hair and she's like, I want to go uh, blonde. My first gut instinct being a new stylist was, all right, let's get you blonde. <laughs> right. And then I, I, I stopped myself and I was like, wait a minute. If we take you blonde today, I can get you blonde. It might take us a while. I also can't guarantee how much hair you're going to have left. You might be a right. platinum blonde pixie. Right. Um, outside of that, um, well, well, that's not a mistake. Um, my mistake. It's happening. I, I, I know <laughs> it, I'm, I'm taking my own advice. I, I'm stepping outside the box to look at it. I was overly cautious. So okay. like, like getting to where I am right now may have taken me a little bit longer because I didn't take the risks that like some stylists have made like in like getting there, like, like trying to like, like break their comfort zone. Okay. So yeah. I, I would say that. Okay. And like overcoming it, like, like I've gone to classes with you. I've, I've learned, I've yeah gone down like that path pretty much anywhere i go you'll see that and that's you know we've had that that's how we met i mean yeah. you were at hair shows and um anytime you were at a hair show you were right there yeah and, and i got to know you and you know we kind of create started creating videos together so mm. you know that's I, my biggest hair mistake was you know i i think you could pinpoint i think you were dead on in the fact that like you could pinpoint Uh, specific things and how'd you overcome them my big thing has always been that i it's just hair like no matter what you could you can really mess somebody's hair up Mm -hmm. but it is hair and it does grow back like if i was a tattoo artist i would be really really nervous about my job i I would never get into the tattoo industry but the fact that the hair does grow back like you don't have like just experiment practice 
and um, and learn and understand the whys behind whatever you can, and you're gonna make mistakes. And as you make those mistakes, like every day I make a mistake in something that I'm mm-hmm. doing, and it's how you twist that mistake and and come out of it that makes you the best. You know, mm-hmm. like that makes you better. So just keep working through your mistakes because it's going to happen. That's how you grow. If you're not making mistakes, you're being too comfortable. And if you're being too comfortable, you're not growing. So, you know, you just got to be, just keep pushing yourself, make mistakes. It's the best thing you can do because it's the only way you're going to learn. Um, all right. What do you recommend for students getting ready to graduate when they make a mistake? Okay. There we go. Same question. There we go. We're, 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 doing, right. we're doing better that, at this. That was easy. Do you prefer one product line over others? This is from Jesse. Um, so here's what I can tell you is pretty much the honest truth. I, you know, we use Paul Mitchell here. Um, I use Bricado because I've really gotten into that product and I'm working very closely with that company. Um, what I've found is that most product lines have similar products. So you don't really, it's not necessarily, do I love this line more than that line? I think you look at what is the, the hair product line doing for your business or for you personally? Does it make your work better? Then go with that product line. Um, I think everybody has different smells that they like. Everybody has different holds that they like and different styles of products. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I'm currently experimenting a lot with Bricado because I really am enjoying uh, the time I've, I've spent working and consulting with that company. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't know... I don't think you should get stuck thinking I should only use one product line. I would say that's a big mistake that I made. Um, not a mistake that I made, but I was very focused on Paul Mitchell for 10 years and didn't pay attention to any other parts of the mm-hmm. industry. Yeah. So I get a little bit bummed out about that because people mention different hairstylists and different things. And I'm, I was so sucked into the Paul Mitchell world that I didn't learn about the other parts of the industry until, um, until I left Paul Mitchell. So uh, that would be my big thing is you can love one product line, but definitely keep your research, keep an open mind so that you're not getting stuck in that one, uh, learning that one style in that one way. Yeah. And going off of what you said, like, like I grew up in a Paul Mitchell school, so I know like the Paul Mitchell products inside and out, but like every product line like has similar things, but I've always like favored Paul, Paul Mitchell. Yeah. And I've always wondered if the fact that I favored it is because of my knowledge of it. Right. I know exactly what to use on which hair type for that like particularly yeah we have a ton of cream gels i wouldn't like interchangeably use each of them on the same person right i mean i can but i'm going to be getting a slightly different result exactly so if i'm going like if you i might like throw up like something that's like kind of controversial no i'm just kidding um but like paul mitchell and aveda might have like exactly the same products they might do the exactly the same things but I might favor Paul Mitchell only because I know which ones I, I'm going to want to like favor in that line for right. a particular hair. Whereas somebody who's more familiar with Aveda is going to have the same experience because they know that product line better. Exactly. Yep. So knowledge. Go yep. out and learn. Yep. And the more you learn about it, the more you'll like it. Um, maybe we should unplug the phone. What do you think? Yeah, I can do that. Should we do that? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh this question, I'm not quite sure what it means, but it says, what's the best way to a new color line? Um, I mean, the best way... So I think your question is probably like how to learn a new color line. The best way to a new color line is definitely just to go get it. Um, but to learn a new color line, this is another thing. Um, most color lines are very similar. They just speak different languages. It's a, it's a big... Uh, challenge in this industry because everybody's trying to one up and uh, and outdo everyone, but I think it confuses everyone with the terminology and the knowledge. So you have like the the European based um, number system of color. You have um, then you have some people that just talk about tone. Um, so, but they all are based on the the color wheel, the color map, right? The color. Uh, so just if you know that, if you understand how to neutralize, how to cancel, how to intensify, um, well, and look at the you'll be fine. What? Look at the bases. Like yeah, look at the bases of the color line, match them up to a color color wheel, and you'll be fine. I, like that's learn the color wheel, learn how to do all that stuff, and then you can add in any color line you want. Uh, 
and and that will then once you have that color line then as you start using it you're going to find well this one has a little bit more ammonia than the last one i had so it does a little bit more lifting so there's going to be different ways you know that you'll tweak it but for the most part the color wheel is pretty standard um how do you get paid for the videos you make so it's a good question i think it's uh, i think it's a great question actually because a lot of people have been asking this um lately because they it was one thing when I was doing one video a week. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm doing a video pretty much every day, everybody's, uh, they seem to be very concerned with ha like, why would well, you do it? Well, I'm, I'm sure that they probably think uh, that it's along the lines of that. If you get paid $10 to put out one video in a week and now you're putting out 20 videos in a week that you're now getting $10 for each one of those videos and like, duh, I'm going to do more videos. <laughs> right. But they that's not how it works. So, um, and, and that would probably be like, uh, an older mentality of how, so the way that social media works nowadays, and I talked about this in my class in Philadelphia um, a couple days ago, the way that company, so my goal was always to provide free education for hairstylists. That was um, when the company started, uh, I mean, b before the company started, me and you made a video, mm -hmm. uh, how to cut a bob, you filmed it, um, we put it out on YouTube, it got a lot of attention, and then, the idea kind of grew from that of, all right, well, maybe I could just put out free videos for edu for for stylists. That's what I was doing. I was educating for 10 years, um, but I wanted to reach bigger audiences, and I wanted to kind of do it on my terms. I wanted to have my own business. So how does free salon education become a business? Well, it becomes a business based on awesome companies that support free salon education, like Minerva Beauty um, was a company that uh, I met with right at the beginning and they've been supporting free salon education for a long time. So they, they do it in a sponsor format. Um, but th they do it in like ways where they send me cool stuff and um, I get to talk about it. Like that's the kind of relationships I'm building with companies because I, I find companies that I really like their stuff and then it's easy to talk about, you know? And then there's another type of company like Donald Scott and Mizutani and all these great companies, Pivot Point, that have reached out and, and I've reached out to them. And um, I sell their products on freestyleeducation.com. So if you like the videos and you like the technique that I'm doing, then you go buy a carving comb or whatever. And that's how money happens in freestyleeducation.com. So it's not something that comes quick. I mean, this has been uh, about three years now of a lot of work and you know our YouTube channel gets a million views a month and um, but YouTube doesn't pay very much at all like YouTube just pays enough to um, at the beginning kind of just it made it worth it and then we were doing the podcast and so you know we were all taking a, a cut of money so it, it, YouTube doesn't really pay very much. YouTube is like the worst <laughs> at paying. So, um, which is fine because it's a cool platform and it allows for other business opportunities. So if you're a young person and you're thinking about how do I get into that kind of thing, um, you just have to build the audience. Everyone's looking for the person that has, um, you know, the following. And, but it needs to be a quality following. And this is something I would spend a little extra time talking about. I'll probably make a separate video sometime. But a lot of people try to get a big following. The big following doesn't really matter. And hair companies do look and see if you have a big following. But that there's, there's a, two different things. There's a big following with not much return. And then there's this smaller following that you've grown organically that you didn't pay for that people just follow you because they like your stuff, that's the most powerful thing you can have. So you could have 100,000 Instagram followers, but who cares if you paid for all of them because you're going to put up a, a picture of a product or um, you're going to make a post about a video and no one cares about it because none of them are even hairdressers anyways. Like the way that you grow a successful business is aiming for like putting out good stuff. Like putting out a video every day. That's why I started putting out a video every day. It wasn't because I get paid more to do that. It's because if I put out a video every day, then I get to kind of keep teaching you guys, keep building my relationship with you guys because that's the strongest thing I can have is, is helping you guys. If I help you guys do a haircut and you buy a $35 carving comb, our relationship is great. You know, like that's the whole 
purpose of this whole thing. If you don't buy a carving comb, that's great too. If you just watch the video, it's awesome. If I don't you buy a pair of scissors. That's really great. <laughs> I have a list of those people. No, so, uh, but th- that's that's what it's all about, guys. So when you start making videos, it's not about tagging, um, you know, like hashtagging celebrities. Like it's not about doing all that stuff because you're building the wrong audience. You're building people that I don't want people that are researching Kim Kardashian. Like I've done a couple videos that I put celebrity names in, and obviously mm-hmm. you get a big return on on the viewership. But the quality of that viewership is not there. And that's why I don't do it very often. Because why would I want 100,000, 300,000, a million followers because I was putting Kim Kardashian's name in my videos? Like that's not the quality of people that you're looking for. So if you want to make videos and you want to make it a business, it's all about the quality. It's about the content. It's about consistency and constantly putting out content and connecting with your audience, doing things like this. Um, how would you start working and building a relationship with a product company? You, you ask. I mean, yeah, it's as simple easy. as that. Yeah. That's the easiest relationship yeah. you'll ever like work to get. <laughs> yeah, they're always looking for people as product companies. So, And that's, that's what's cool. If you think about like, so I'm talking to thousands of hairdressers a day um, through social media. And so I've been able to build relationships with many product companies, and that was always my goal. Product companies have money. I'm not there to take money from hairdressers. So it was always in my business model. How do I build an audience and then ask the product companies to support it? And um, when you want to work for a product company, all you have to do is reach out to a rep or find a product company that you really love and just show up at a hair show and and see what you can do to help. You're going to do a lot of volunteering um, when you first start out, you got to get your foot in the door. Um, product companies are, are run very corporately, which isn't a bad thing. It just means that you got to work your way up that ladder. And the way you do that is by dedicating a lot of time to that company. Um, all right. Kyle says, which products do you actually use? I actually use a lot of products. Yeah. Like I actually use quite a few different ones. I was going to say, if you're seen using a product in the video, you, you're using that product behind the yeah. China salon too. Yeah. And I even said in Philly, because I didn't have my Bricado cream wax, <laughs> but I did a bob and I was like, oh my gosh, I really wish I had cream wax. And then um, Josh gave me a Rojo cream wax. Okay. It worked great. Like all of these products are similar. It's what does the company stand for? And that's uh, kind of goes back to what I said before. I am currently working with Bricado because that's the product company that um, has been uh, really supportive of what I'm doing. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's the deal. You know, I, I love and like that said, the more knowledge you have, like now I'm helping um, Bricado kind of come up with different products because I saw things lacking with what they had. So I said to them, you know, I really wish we had this, this and this. They're listening to that. And it's a small company. So it's fun to grow with with different companies. I've never been a person that wants to like go work for the people that are already there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like what's the fun in going to work for a company that's already made it? Like you're just going to be this little person in a company that's already made it. But if you start with a company that hasn't made it and you help build that company, you look a lot better. Like in the end, it's a much more gratifying thing than any other thing. Okay, so Kyle asked, how do you become Instagram famous? You have so, to hashtag InstaFame a lot. <laughs> right. Now, here's the deal. So Instagram famous, uh, we talked about it. It's two different things. So you could either pay for an audience, which spend a, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, you can get a, a lot of followers, or you can work really hard. The problem is Instagram has kind of shifted its way. Like people that are Instagram famous are the ones that are pretty much going to be Instagram famous. It's very hard at this point to start posting photos and gaining a huge like million follower followings, right? The way that you do it um, is I've made a shift because I missed the boat. I was so focused on YouTube, missed the Instagram boat. So I didn't have a lot of followers on Instagram. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. No, no, wait. But then I made a shift. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> so I didn't have a lot of followers on Instagram. Made a shift. Instagram's going video. I am 
great at video. That's yep. what I do. So I started making 15 second how to do a haircut in 15 second videos and started posting those almost every single day. And I've grown Instagram. I think I had 5,000 followers when I started and I'm about to hit 30,000 in the last two months. So you have to find what the new thing is and then go for it. So you got to be on the lookout for what is happening in the industry, what's new and start posting about it. Um, and that's, that's how you do it. And it's been working. So I, I woke up this morning and I, I, I think I had 800 new followers since last night. I don't uh, know how I was excited for two people start, sh- <laughs> people start sharing what you're doing. They share your work and, uh, and that's how you get the followers. Um, but what's most important uh, is that you focus on getting great at what you do first. So um, because a lot of these people that are becoming Instagram famous, they're, they're getting now thrown up on stages and having to teach. They don't know how to teach. Right. And it, there's nothing wrong with it. They, 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 have, they have great content. They have great verbiage when it's able to be ran out. Back, 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 back. Yeah. Back, back, back. <laughs> right. And, right. But when you're on stage, you don't have that opportunity to go, hold on, that's not what I meant to say. Backspace, backspace, backspace. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. Which is me a million times when I'm trying to write something. But um, that's why I love that I worked for Paul Mitchell for 10 years because I taught 75 classes a year and learned to teach. And that's why I can have a YouTube channel. And most people don't have YouTube channels because they have to be in front of a camera actually teaching something. And... Most people are a lot better at, you can hide things very easily. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying Instagram people hide things. I'm just saying, because you can hide things I in am. video as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is, then you get thrown up on a stage and it's very difficult. There's very few people that can get up in front of a bunch of people and teach what they do. So um, definitely get good at what you're doing. Learn your craft first, then start posting Um as you start to get more comfortable or start a page and just post um, and ask for critiques, ask for people to look at your stuff and send it direct message it to somebody that you trust or something like that. All right. What's the best advice you have for a future barber? I mean, barbering, I think you're jumping in. If you're a future barber and you're in school, I think you're getting into it at a pretty good time. I think barbering two years ago was gigantic, and I think it's been growing. Um, I think we're – I'm not sure. Uh, In my opinion, I think we're starting to hit that kind of like – I can feel that we're hitting that peak Mm -hmm. of what barbering is It for the salon industry, not for barbering industry, but like – from a salon standpoint, because I'm starting to feel the clients coming in and saying, you know what? I kind of want my hair a little bit longer. Like yeah. I'm not looking for that tight fade anymore. Yeah. So I think that the style is shifting a little bit. It's a little more grown in. Um, I think if you're in cosmetology school and you're looking to barber, the best advice would probably be to get into bar like a barber shop. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. I think whatever your passion is, definitely go for it. If you love doing men's hair, men's hair is going to be around forever. When I say we've hit a peak, I mean hairdressers and barbers are obsessed with men's hair right now. Do exactly what we've always said. Like research the barbershops, just like we would like research the salons. Find the one that you want to work in because not every barbershop is the same as the other. Right. Just like every salon isn't the same as the other. Uh, So find a barbershop that first you like how they run. Then find out if you like the owner. Find out if you like the employees. Okay. Go from there. What is the easier way to long hair? I have no idea. Be patient. Oh, no, that's not. Patience isn't easy. Um, <laughs> forget about it. And <laughs> just pay attention to other things. And then before you know it, the hair is going to be really long. That, so easy. That's what I do with my beard. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. I'm not sure if they're talking about how they get long hair or doing long hair. Oh. Either way, we don't really know. Me and Thad are probably the worst people to ask that. There are other people to ask. Though. I have a really easy uh, updo. It's called a ponytail. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's technically up. Okay. Do you own your own salon? Yes, I do. No. I'm in it. I don't. I own it with my beautiful wife, Christina, who helps me run it. Um, these guys have been here for for 
you've been here for five years. Yeah, this summer will be five years. Yeah. Uh, so time flies. Five years. The other guys have been here for over three years. So um, a lot of fun. I have a small space that I love. I love having a small salon. I would never want a huge salon. I love having the freedom to make the videos, hang with you guys on video, hang with these guys and do what we do um, and teach. That was always the goal. When, when you say you like the freedom of having a small salon and like making the videos, if you had a larger salon, would your employees tell you that you couldn't make the videos? No, but I would have <laughs> to pay attention to them a lot more. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are you still an active stylist? Yes. Um, I'm active. I do hair one and a half days a week behind the chair, but I'm in the salon cutting hair for videos pretty much every single day. And uh, I don't think you're inactive in anything you do. <laughs> no. No, except for waking up. I'm really bad at waking up. <laughs> I've decided that like that's, I want to be one of those people. That's because you're so active that you're really bad at going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So by the time you get to sleep, it's time to wake up again. I know. I want to be one of those people that like gets up at 6 a.m. and like has their like successful start to the day. I am the that's worst. Re- that's really hard to do when you go to bed at 4 after editing videos well, online. Well, it's true. It's true. I do go to bed really <laughs> late and, I'm wor- and I work really late. So really, I mean, I'm working probably 16 hours a day mm-hmm. in between not really working 16 hours a day, but my, my brain is on work 16 hours a day, but also I'm hanging out with Hayden and Christina and doing different things. So, all right. What is your worst experience in the hair industry? We talked about that. Oh, some of these are the same question. All right, cool. What made you decide to do FSE? I think we answered that right. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, how long have you been in the industry? 12 years? I guess six years now, question mark? Seven? I don't know. I started in at the end of uh, 2009. Okay. We'll go with that. You guys do the math. <laughs> do you prefer men's cuts or women's cuts? I like both. Same. Different reasons. Um, how yeah. long should it take to do a skin fade? As I don't do skin uh, fades. As long as it really. takes to make sure that it's all blended. Yeah. <laughs> As, same as any other haircut. As long as, as long as it takes to make it look like a good haircut. Yeah. If it doesn't look good, you're not done yet. It Keep definitely going. takes me longer because it's not something I, I really right. do. And every hair type is going to be different. Like some hair is going to blend out easier than others. So, How do you become famous in our industry? Was it a struggle? Um, I still don't. I st- to th- that like, means you're famous, Matt. <laughs> I know. <right>? <laughs> you, <laughs> got the, you got that question. I'm still... I'm like one of those people that like if I'm walking through a hair show and people don't understand who I don't see me <laughs> like and say hello, then I feel like I'm, I'm still not there. Like I still yeah. have to work really hard. So um, I'm going to keep making videos every day. So you guys come up and give me a high five at every single hair show. There you go. That's the goal. Um, so I don't know how you become famous. I'll, yet. I'll take your picture <laughs> with Matt. Um, but you can make lots of videos and um, pretend. Uh, what motivates you? Honestly, when I say that the comments in every video motivate I, is dead on true. The attention. Yeah. The atten- <laughs> it's attention because wait, 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 it, it wait, lets well, you know. That I say that sarcastically, but thumbs up, comments, shares, just just knowing that like what you're doing, <laughs> not, not not like in like yeah, an egotistical, no, but j- just knowing that what you're doing is what people are looking for. Yeah. That's what motivates you. Yeah. Like when when I do a video and it has, you know it gets a lot of likes. It's like, you know that you, you were reaching the people the way you were hoping for me. It's caffeine. Caffeine motivates me. Yeah. Caffeine is definitely a good one too. Yeah. Plus the people that work here, my family, you know, all that. It's the people you surround yourself, you know, so they talk about, if you surround yourself with negativity, like if you're like hanging out with people that are just like complaining, yeah, you're not going to go anywhere because you're going to be like in that mindset of complaining and, being like brought down yeah because this question so who are your mentors this is like the big thing for me that i've said a lot like i i used to look up to a lot of people and then i realized that all of those people i look up to are just normal people that have either normal problems or even more extreme problems than normal problems yeah i think you should have uh like milestone mentors like yeah have your mentors during school have Mm -hmm. your mentors as you're starting in the industry yeah then have your mentor like as you reach your goals get new mentors yeah because you're going to absorb different things from different people and you're going to grow from that yeah milestone mentors 
watch everyone, watch everything that's happening, and you will totally uh, become come out more successful when you learn from multiple. Even, even watch the people that aren't doing it right, because then you know why they're not doing it right. Yeah, yeah, you'll learn from everybody, and surround yourself with people that push you. So um, that's always been like if if the staff here did not want to learn, didn't want to grow, then it would be a really weird environment, you know? And if I wasn't as motivated and crazy about doing things to push the levels, then I, I think these guys, I don't know what these guys would do, would be doing. So I think you just got to keep going, keep pushing forward. I think that's pretty much it. That's all folks. What's your weakness? Food. Yep. But not during the day, only at night. I don't eat at all, all day long. And then at night I eat and I have to stop doing that. That's my weakness. I love food. Um, that's it. How long did it take to build what you have now? A it's going to take forever. Like, because I haven't built it yet. I think that that's a lifetime. Because like it yeah. didn't start like when you bought the salon from sam i don't think it started when you worked with sam yeah it started like from like how you grew up yep <coughs> and i had every job you could possibly think of which taught me different little skills um for what kind of became what i'm doing now but i'm nowhere near what i want so keep going and i can't even tell you what that is it's going to be really exciting though I promise it's like that movie with uh, george clooney what's your goal I don't know, but I haven't hit it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a number in mind, but I'm not there yet. I hope you guys like this q and I think it was intense. I appreciate the school sending this many questions. So shout out to um, the New York. Continental School of Beauty in Olean, New York. Thank you guys for submitting the questions. This is cool. Please, somebody else do this. Because yeah. this was awesome. If you want to get your staff together and come up with questions, this is way cool. I'll dedicate an entire episode to you because this was fun. And I like going through and answering we, this. We should figure out how to make this like a game. We tore this up. Yeah. It was a lot. I hope any of these answers were good for you guys, but it was really fun. I think what we should do is we should go through and read the questions first, write down answers, and then kind of do it kind of like games of human, or uh, cards of humanity <laughs> and like, like mix and match them and then be like, you guys have to figure it out. <laughs> Which answers were with which questions. Whoa. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give us love in the comments. Let us know what you thought. Um, Also, submit those questions. If you want to email a list of questions, you can send those to matt at freesaloneducation.com or direct message on Instagram. You can tag us on Instagram. Tag me on Twitter. Um, Follow us on Instagram at freesaloneducation. You can follow Thad. Thad Bolonized. At Thad Bolonized. Drea's back there. What's up, Drea? Follow Drea. What is it? Hair by? Hair by Dre Day. Hair by Dre Day. She thinks she's a rapper. She is a rapper. She's unwrapping right now. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.